Hey guys, Mike Miltimore here. Part three in our three-part series on how to adjust a river song guitar. The first part I showed you how to adjust the action really quickly. Uh, even a drummer can do it, it's that easy. Second part, I, uh, I showed you how to intonate your acoustic guitar so you can have perfect tuning up and down the neck. But now we're gonna show you how to actually take the entire guitar apart and put it back together. Uh, you might wanna have to do that if you have to do any service issues or, uh, you know, I have no idea why you'd want to take a guitar apart, but if you did, this is how you do it. Uh, first thing you need to do is take your screwdriver. Um, I guess take off your strings is really the first thing. So I've already taken off the strings. We take our screwdriver, put it onto the diffuser plate here, and just undo these two uh, screws. These two guys hold that guy on there. Now the diffuser balances out the, the tone of the guitar. It actually eliminates um, a lot of the drone notes that go on, it eliminates the wolf notes, balances out the tone from string to string, and uh, really makes the guitar um, a lot better instrument. So that's our diffuser plate. It's actually made from the same wood from the guitar top, just turn 90 degrees. And then you can see our, our serial number and I sign every guitar before it leaves our factory to make sure that it meets our quality control. So that comes off there like that. Next thing that we have to do is take off the end strap pin. You know, in fact, I can even just unplug this guy for right now. This guy comes off just like this. This is just the strap pin. Uh, it's hooked up to the structure of the neck. You can see it moving up and down like this. The other strap pin has to come off. This strap pin is finger tight. And what it does is it allows the neck, stops it from really moving out of the pocket. So now we've got all that off. Uh, the next step that we should do is just take our Allen key, take our action adjustment, back it off all the way. By the way, this makes it really nice and easy if you have to change strings. You don't have to actually, um, or change saddles or do anything like that. You can actually just loosen this off and it takes a lot of the slack um, into the strings. Okay, so now we have it just like that. All you do is you put a little bit of pressure up on the neck with your thumb right on this point here, which is part of the neck block, and rocking it with your other hand, lifting it up until it's as high as it can go, and pulling it out and clear away. And you can see the structure of our guitars where we have the neck that runs solid all the way down to the 24th fret so it expands and contracts evenly uh, and the strut that runs through the guitar itself. This end of the strut is adjustable in and out here and that allows us to change the length of it as well. You can see there's a Teflon washer that it slides up and down on. Uh, just really simple. There's our intonation adjustments. Of course in the last video I just showed you how to adjust those intonation adjustments. So this guitar is set up and ready to rock. Now you might want to do something like refret the guitar because you play it lots, or you might need to clean up the fret edges because the difference is in humidity. But you can do this all at this time. It's just like adjusting an electric guitar. Uh, in fact, the truss rod goes the entire length of the neck as well like an electric guitar. So this puppy is just a, an amazing guitar to adjust. Let's look at the guitar real quick itself. You can see we have our neck pocket. So we have more surface area that actually connects the, uh, the neck to the body than even a dovetail neck joint. Then the neck runs all the way through inside the guitar to the back end block, which is radius, so we have nice smooth operation. Um, you can see that there's no structural bracing up in here, so we have lots of movement and, and, uh, and tone from that. And as well, this gives us a great opportunity to look inside and see the kerfing right in the corner of the guitars, how small it is and how consistent it is all the way around the guitar. This allows us to have the less, least amount of mass in the corners of our guitars, so we can have more energy transferring from the top to the sides to the back. It's just another way that we uh, make our unique guitars. So once we have it all apart, uh, you might want to take this opportunity to wax uh, the neck pocket, um, which you, you just you can see there's a little bit of wax here from uh, when we did it, uh, when it first went together. You just wax it a little bit and that eliminates any of the creaks or anything, so it is a nice tight fit. Then all you do is simply slide this guy in. You can use the center line of the top to get it lined up. You can see that guy pokes out just like that. And then just gently let it slide into the gap. And you can see actually that movement of that guitar. There's your uh, action adjustment by changing the angle of the neck. Uh, and then intonation of course is just moving it in and out this way. So you know it's, it's a better, stronger, structural, structurally stronger guitar. It's better for intonation, it's better for action because you can totally adjust it. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to tighten this guy up, just finger tight. Again, all it's doing is just stopping it from leaving uh, the guitar itself. 
bring it right down just like that. And then on the back side here, we're going to put the, uh, we need to adjust this though. So this is already all the way in. We need to bring it up so it's at about zero on this particular guitar. So we're going to come in from the back, adjust that set screw. You can see it moving up to zero. Of course, when it hits the zero mark, we should check it just to make sure we're in the ballpark. And we should be close to being parallel with our fretboard with our guitar top. Now, it's not quite parallel. In fact, it's a little bit too tall. So I'm just going to adjust it back a little bit so that it becomes parallel. So if we look at the fretboard, we can adjust it from being too far the other way or back it. Just something like that, I think, is going to be a great place for us to start. Okay. Next, next setup that we have to do is, is put the strings on. So I just wound them up here nicely. Let's see how lucky I am and see if they get tangled up. So far, so good. This guy just goes right on there like that. Oh, you know what I've done? I actually did this up too much too fast. Let me show you a quick trick too. <laughs> we back it off all the way. It takes off a lot of tension off the strings. It allows it so we don't have to wind the strings quite as much when we're going to put it back together. These guitars are really nice and quite fast to uh, set up and adjust. So that guy just goes right in there. Make sure it's all lined up. There's one. We're going to go to our next string. Now we use Diderio EXP-16s here at the factory. They're a coated string. Uh, they're really quite nice. We also use a GraphTech um, pins. Now check this out. I don't know if you can hear this, but can you hear how they ring? They sound like ceramic. This is a uh, really hard material. It's fantastic. It's not plastic. It's actually made right here in BC and they, uh, they sound great and really help out your guitar. So we get our strings all on here, get it all lined up, ready to rock. And of course you want to have your strings, you can see how they're bent a little bit. That's because they were just on here. The idea of the string is it's going to go underneath the top and the pin is going to push right beside it, just like that. Uh, and then that taper of the pin is what holds it in place. You know, I'm really lucky today because usually these strings get all tangled up when I wrap them up like that. But life is just tickety-boo. That's a Canadianism. <laughs> just like that. Okay, next we're going to tighten this up with our Allen key in the back. Bring it back up to about the zero mark. You can see that this guitar actually goes to 11 both ways. I did that to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Spinal Tap. And I make sure that it's about parallel, and that's going to be a great place for us to start. Now I just need to tune it up. Now we have a little bit of tension on the neck. What we're going to do is we're just going to adjust this guy. This is the strut length. Here it's not making any difference in pitch. So what's going to happen is I'm going to Turn this counterclockwise, increasing the length of the strut until it touches the end. And then I'm just going to give it a quarter turn. Now that strut is at the right length to give you that structural strength across here. And we just tune it up. Okay, so we get that guy all tuned up just like that. Last, next thing that we're going to do is just Adjust it for our string height. You remember from the first video? To the point where it buzzes. So there's a buzz, nothing. That half turn is an 80th of an inch adjustment at that. And then we're going to go one, two turns, all the way back, retune.
and it's all adjusted, ready to rock. The last thing we have to do is put in the diffuser disc, which you can get custom diffuser discs made up if you want. Just contact us up, www.riversongguitars.com, and it's just that easy to adjust your Riversong guitar.